Okay, so today I want to uh, read to you my story. This is my testimony. It's I'm, I tried to you know make a short version of it, but it ended up being like five pages long. But I figured let me just read it to you, and um, you know I hope that somebody can pull some kind of encouragement or feel uplifted in their own walk with God, because you know um, in the end that's all that's gonna matter is where you're at with God. How intimate did you let that relationship get? You know, so um, this is it, you know, and just bear with me because I'm reading it from a paper, you feel me, as opposed to just telling you, you know, from the cuff. But anyway, I was born in Sacramento, California, North Highlands to be exact. I was raised as the youngest boy, as the youngest boy in a family of two by a single mom. My father's bouts with drug addiction and whatever accompanied that life kept him from the majority of my life. As I grew up, it was obvious to those around that I would one day be a hard-headed man with his own ideas. My youth came and went in a flash, but solidified their suspicions, and by the time I was 16, I was running with the gangbangers and having fun the way hardheads choose. Needless to say, the slippery slope I chose only led to bloody lips, black eyes, and busted knuckles, and a lot of followers. With my age, my size, and my reputation to continue to grow, as continued to grow as With my age, my size, and my reputation continued to grow as someone about their money, my bad, that would always stand up to a challenge. Okay. Living the street life had many drawbacks and dead friends was one of them. I always felt like I had the, I always felt like the facts of life impacted me differently and I would sometimes be parked outside on late nights or just by myself somewhere self-medicating and, you know, trying to make sense of it all. I was still a boy. I ended up in the hall a couple times for gun possession and for robbery. I went to the county soon after turning 18 and kept going back till I caught a case that sent me to prison. Drugs and guns seemed to always be the catalyst. Through these years, I'd always believed in God, but on my own terms. I adopted the common misconception that you can believe in God however you choose and no one else's opinions matters. But I was completely wrong, as God was soon showing me. Too many predicaments, too many predicaments to name. I called out for him to save or help me. So many times God came through for me when I was still living foul. That unconditional love is what indebted me for life when he later revealed that his opinion on how to believe in him was the only one that mattered. I've been to prison three times. First time for dope and guns. Uh, the boys came in all trucks and unmarked cars to find about five zips of hard, zip a tree, about three racks of mat three racks, a Mac 11, and a 357, and took me and my girl at the time to jail. I did three and a half years on six, about around there somewhere. Um, she did like eight months. Throughout this bid, God was trying to talk to me, but I wasn't ready to really open the door of my heart. I still was being hard-headed. He actually performed a miracle when I called out to him in a whisper from behind the walls of Soledad that I'll postpone sharing for another testimony. When I got out, I made a half-assed attempt to straighten up, but I ran right back to the game that was literally calling me. I decided I'd rather be in jail than be broke and just started hit hustling hard till I was comfy again. I had two spots cranking. Pills, perp, powder, and hard was the antidote to any hungry hustler's stomach pains, and I knew how to get it off, so coming up was never a dilemma for me. Staying out, now that was a different story. I went hard for about a year, till I went back for a high speed. Once again, God was there for me, and instead of getting slapped with real time, it's like he wanted me to know for sure, so I couldn't deny his power that he was the only reason I didn't go back for no real time. There I was, begging in the back of the um, police car that the dogs don't find a half a zip of coke bagged, bagged up individually and poorly hidden in the trunk as the dogs sniff away. Not to mention the zip of trees that I uh, threw while I'm booking down Hillsdale or the hard bundle I chucked at a group of bystanders on the corner of Madison and Hillsdale when I first turned and made that right coming down Madison I'm telling you it was only by God's good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth Ecclesiastes 7 and 1
grace that I didn't get um get caught up on that one. And you know, when I first started going on the high speed, my little partner, for me, he hopped out with the banger. That could have been drugs and dope again. God was with me. Oh, I only went for a simple evading and got 10 months in Susanville. So, I mean, you know, I could laugh at that now, you know, and 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 look at that in hindsight and say, wow, you know, God was really there. But I didn't know I had a part to play in that relationship. Uh, my lack of understanding, coupled with a stubborn spirit to do things my own way, could have easily left me dead or in jail for testing God's mercy. Or left me in jail for life for testing God's mercy, but he continued to teach me, knowing I would soon submit to him fully. It wasn't until I got out and was tired of bumping my head on the same wall that I tried to slow down. Trouble is, I tried on my own. Since I wasn't reading my Bible like I was supposed to, I had no idea that self-righteousness couldn't fix what, what was so bent out of shape. I'd need Jesus Christ himself for so heavy of a task. Out more than a year, excuse me, out more than a year back to doing what I knew, what I knew best, but in a slower, less chaotic way, I thought I was doing good, and I was, until presented with an opportunity to do even better, I had a lick. I called one of my turf partners and we was headed to an unknowing Pisces apartment to free him of the whole enchilada. But the first stop sign we came to, the police blurped us and we went to jail. Like I said before, too many blessings to include in this short tutorial. Just know God has been showing me in all my adult years that he is in full control. And I could have easily gotten double digit years on that case, but instead I only got 12 months and a chance to sit down and find out more about this God who keeps saving me from my own destructive nature. He finally had my full attention. In that year, I read the Bible and so much of it just made me want to know more of this promise of eternal life that seemed so attainable. Here I was in a world that never seemed fair, unfair conditions, unfair court systems, unfair judges and police, unfair employers, but God seemed like the only friend I'd ever had that was always fair. My earth's father just showed me how much of a perfect father my heavenly creator really was. And I began to get excited over something that was finally really true, something that was finally authentic it was when, when everything else was so counterfeit. Time went on, I got out with more focus. I broke up with my then girlfriend and, somehow, and something about that breakup let me pursue God in a way that I never had before. I started to, to, to lock myself in my apartment and bar myself off from the world. My explanation to myself was that it seems like when I'm locked up, I can be so devoted to bettering myself physically, mentally, and spiritually because I'm taken away from the world's distractions. Uh, but when I get out, I always eventually let those distractions pull me right back, pull me away from whatever progress I'd made. I was, in my hard-headed way, mentally going, mentally going on a sabbatical. I stopped answering my phone, stopped kicking it with people, because they, they couldn't care less about me anyway. I read the Bible day and night and did research, wrote music, and worked out like I was in the pen. And one day it clicked. All of God's mercy, his undying love, his sacrifice. He sent his only begotten son. The son of the king came to earth to be ridiculed, crucified, and Jesus did it willingly. Also, I could have life and free myself from the shackles of sin if I just believe in him. Here I was in my living room, standing up at the counter, about to twist something up and realizing, wow, I've never even tried to live life the way God wants me to. I lie when I see fit. I steal when I think I need to. I have sex when I want. But God created me, and maybe God's way is best for reasons I don't quite understand. I've tried living life how I want, and it, see, it almost always gets me in trouble. Don't I owe it to God, the one who created me, the world, the galaxy, to live how he wants me to? With such a rich revelation, I was overcome with sorrow and dropped to my knees as tears overflowed from my eyes. My head to the ground, I begged for God's forgiveness and was filled from head to toe with his love and a peace that I could never explain. 
When I got up, it was as if I was talking to God. I was, I was literally talking to him. And I noticed for the first time in my life that this was a real relationship, but that I had been the, the taker all this time. Supposed to be give and take. I was the taker of the whole relationship. He'd been there for me in so many different ways, so many times, and yet I've never done anything for him. I asked God for the first time in my life, what can I do for you? It's like I couldn't see God, but I, but it's like I could hear it in his voice. I knew he was smirking. It was like he smirked and said, you sure you're ready for all that? I paused for maybe three seconds and answered yes. It shall be as when an hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he waketh, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Isaiah 29 and 8 and since then, I've been on the most magical journey ever. Today, I'm just a vehicle for God and his message. God has cured me of all infirmities and given me sight when I was blind. He loves all of his sheep the same way and has been calling out to you in your day-to-day -day lives. I hope you hear his call in my music because his word and his message is the underlying purifier of each song and the new man at the end at the, and the new man is at the end of each song to tell the old man that was just rapping of the pitfalls of thinking the way that old serpent wants us to think. I hope my story, even though in summary, helps you turn to the next chapter of your story where God is waiting for you with open arms. May he bless and keep you all. Bust a nigga head, bust a nigga head, bust a nigga damn if I do.